have a glass of red wine a day because there's certain benefits. What Somehow I knew you would ask me about that. <laughs> I would never think there'd be a day that I would say something is worse than smoking, but when it comes to brain health alcohol, is probably the worst thing that can happen. Right. Don't do it, fellas. <laughs> hey guys, Dr. Kimon Beckel is here from the Stroke and Brain Aneurysm Center of Long Island. Uh, yet another video where we're gonna talk about a question uh, and a topic that's interesting to our viewers. And we've been getting a lot about smoking, alcohol consumption, all the vices that people have. I was gonna say a little negativity. Yeah, and how does how that affects brain health, right? Yeah. And, and uh, I think I think uh, I'm sure this is going to create a lot of uh, emotion, uh, but you know we want to we want to get you the best information and and uh, like I said I'm not one to preach but we're going to get you uh, the the real deal the scoop on what's going on with smoking and alcohol. Well, I, I think these are important topics because a lot of times when people hear smoking they think cancer they think lungs primarily right. alcohol you know it's always your liver right but people don't understand the whole body connection so right right right. So how does smoking affect brain health? So we don't have any direct evidence on how smoking affects brain health, right? Um, but we know what smoking does to blood vessels. Mm -hmm. We know what smoking does to cells of the body in general and how some of the toxins that are in cigarette smoke or in vaping um, uh, can affect the blood vessels and the brain itself, right? And, and so on the blood vessel side, you build up more plaque, you build up more disease of the blood vessels mm -hmm. that can decrease the blood flow going into the brain and that can cause disease of the brain. The, 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 the brain cells will be ischemic. They're not going to be getting enough blood. They're going to be small strokes. Mm -hmm. And over time, this will have an impact on your ability to process, on your ability to cognitively be sharp. Uh, and certainly, uh, probably one of the worst things that you can do uh, environmentally or things that you can't control smoking is one of the worst ones about uh, in, in, re in relation to its impact on your brain health I, I mean obviously we've touched on this before in previous podcasts but uh, how does the smoking relate to brain pathology that we see say aneurysms Wow <laughs> uh, there's a direct correlation it's pretty much the only thing that we know that causes or can cause a brain aneurysm that can cause a stroke right um, it's very important to to control smoking and you know when we say smoking we mean any kind of smoking right vaping is not immune uh i know a lot of people are switching from smoking to vaping especially the newer generation uh there's not the unfortunately <laughs> there there's no there's no immunity You're with any of these swapping forms. out yeah one vice for another as you would say correct uh the effects of alcohol on the brain so those are a lot uh more severe uh, believe it or not, you know, I, I would never, I would never think there'd be a day that I would say something is worse than smoking. But when it comes to brain health, alcohol is probably the worst thing that can happen, right? Um, brain cells die every time you're exposed to alcohol. You know, even when you're socially drinking, brain cells will die. Uh, no way around it. You know, alcohol is toxic uh, for the brain and your body. Doing it in excess is even more detrimental and like you said it has an effect on your liver it has an effect everywhere and it can affect the brain by affecting other vital organs that subsequently will create an environment in which the brain cannot function like what we call an encephalopathy that can be caused from liver dysfunction uh, but its direct effect on the brain has to do with your ability to process it has to do with memory uh, retention uh, your your ability to sleep um, that then has subsequent effect on learning uh, and, and so to perform at your highest level, alcohol is a problem. So, you, you, you know, things change from time to time in the medical field right. based upon research and studies. And you always hear, uh, you know, have a glass of red wine a day because there's certain benefits. What Somehow you I knew about? you would ask me about that. <laughs> so, y yes, there, it's important. Th there, there are benefits to one thing, but there might not be benefits to another thing, right? There's a trade-off. Exactly. Now we're talking about brain health. And talking about brain health um, does not necessarily include cardiac health and other issues. So, of course, if you just look at one factor, you can always find a benefit. But looking at the whole body, um, of course, we know the impact on brain and, and, and the health there. Now, you know, how do you reconcile social drinking and everything else? You know, everything is a choice at the end of the day. You know, you want to socially drink, that's fine. Don't do it in, mo don't do it in excess. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I believe in moderation. I personally don't drink, uh, and it's a conscious choice uh, to protect my brain. But, of course, that, that really 
um, you know, at the end of the day, it's your choice. Uh, alcohol in excess definitely will have a negative impact on your body, on your, on your health, on everything. Um, but, you know, I've never drunk a day in my life. So, you know, I'm a little different than most. What are the long-term consequences of alcohol abuse on the brain? Uh, those we, are, we talk about the excess part. Yeah, those are horrible, right? So, so of course, strokes can happen. Um, encephalopathy can happen. Uh, there can be there can be uh, parts of the brain that literally die and 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 completely uh, dissolve because of chronic consumption of alcohol. Um, you know, there's there's uh, there's no way back. But if you're withdrawing from alcohol, mm -hmm. that can have a very bad impact on your brain health. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can have seizures, you can have delirium, you can go into a coma just by stopping alcohol. Um, so really, really, uh, one, of, one of the, frankly, my humble opinion are the worst drugs you can ever be on. Um, you know, smoking, of course, challenging to stop, right? But if you stop smoking, there's not gonna be a physical response in your body that can put your life at risk. If you stop drinking alcohol abruptly and you're a chronic consumer, you can die from that withdrawal, which is spectacular in my head about, you know, how loose we are about alcohol consumption. Yeah. And dealing with patients, I'm sure, you know, you encounter a smoker and you have to say, you should stop. Right. Is there any um, strategies to help quitting that if they ask, somebody asked you, uh, that you would recommend? Yeah, yes and no. You know, again, what, what works for somebody doesn't work for somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. Of course, we recommend quitting smoking to everybody. Um, there's some acceptable general strategies that have to do, of course, with stop smoking, substitute that with something else, either chewing gum or substitute the nicotine with, with something else, mm -hmm. um, uh, or you stop vaping and other things. But, but uh, at the end of the day, it comes out to, down to your willpower and determination. When you're ready emotionally and mentally, then you'll be able to quit um, and you'll find what you can substitute with. A lot of people gain weight when they stop smoking mm -hmm. because you know, you always want to do something with your mouth and you start eating. And then, of course, that that has a negative effect. Um, but at the end of the day, do whatever works for you. There's great resources online for quitting smoking and there's medications that we can use to help in the process. But those are very select groups. Always work with your primary care doctor to identify the right medications, the right strategies. And those can minimize, of course, um, the impact of the craving. Uh, of stopping smoking. How does smoking and alcohol used during pregnancy uh, affect the child? From a uh, neuro standpoint. Don't do it, fellas. <laughs> no, I mean, it's probably the worst thing that a mother can do. I mean, minus being on, on hard drugs. Uh, smoking and alcohol um, are horrible for, for the child. Smoking is can have a substantial impact on the child's health and on the child's brain. But really, alcohol is the worst. Uh, there's a syndrome called fetal alcohol syndrome. Child being exposed to a substantial amount of alcohol will be born with uh, a problematic brain. There's gonna be mental disabilities, even life-threatening problems that can be threatening for the child's life. Um, baby can be born stillborn in those environments. Uh, it's one of the worst things that you can actually do um, for the child's life, yeah. So, um, you know, I know that this is going to attach to that because this I hear things. Some women they, they get pregnant, right? And I'm not talking about if, if they're an alcoholic or anything like that, right? But, right. but they, you know, say that they they get pregnant, they don't know, they go to a, a social function, they have a couple drinks, and then they are very nervous. That that shouldn't really, uh, you know, fetal alcohol syndrome has to do with prolonged exposure. Um, it, you know. I think a lot of ladies have been a victim of that. You know, they not not you know you don't know you're pregnant until you know, and you live your life in the meanwhile. And so, um, I, I wouldn't. Uh, we have no evidence that that exposure is detrimental to the child at all. So I wouldn't stress about it. Okay. Because I mean, you hear that a lot. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, I mean, people are like, I didn't know. I, I went out. I had. You know, it happens. Numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the baby should be okay. To kind of sum things up, and I think to to close it, if you know, you have patients that are smoking for many years right. or uh, are drinking for many years. And what are the benefits? Because they might say, I've been doing it for 20 years. What's the point of stopping now? What ah. positives can they see from stopping right, right uh, away? 
stop anytime. It'll have an impact on you. Um, now, admittedly, it takes a long time for the impact of that intervention of stopping smoking or, you know, for alcoholics, stopping drinking. Um, but smoking in particular has a, um, a, um, almost a, a tail on its impact on your body. So if, you're, if you stop smoking today, you're not going to be at the same risk as a non-smoker for mm -hmm. several years, five to ten years, depending on how many years of exposure you've had. And uh, you, you want to get to the same level as quickly as possible in terms of risk of cancer, cardiovascular disease, all that stuff. So stop today so that you can get... You so, can get, so the benefits, they will see benefits. It's, they will see benefits. Just, it's not going to be immediate. Yeah. It'll take five years, ten years, depending on how much exposure you've had. Uh, but you definitely will see benefits. But if you don't take that first step, you're not going to be able to get through those five, ten years and then go back to the same risk as a non-smoker. Okay. All right. Yeah. Super. Well, you guys reach out with any questions. Always, we're available for you. We appreciate you reaching out to us. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you in another video. Thank you very Take much. Take care.